practice is characterized by progressive uh, progressive destruction of insulin secreting pancreatic beta cells the preservation of residual beta cell function measured by the c-peptide level is clinically important as it is associated with reduced blood glucose level. yeah i am start is to evaluate factors associated with preserved c peptide levels to evaluate the factors associated with preservation of c peptide preserve c peptide at type 1 diabetes diagnosis You make slide show, slide show. Ready. We hypothesis that C peptide levels were higher in overweight and type one individuals, and whether type one diabetes develops at an younger age in such individuals. So let me go into the methodology of my study. This flow chart depicts the methodology of my study. Total number of diabetes subjects enrolled in our institute from 1991 to 2017 were 2597. In that. So in the total number of individuals aged five to eighteen years at first visit were one eight four three individuals with both C peptide and GAD antibody, which was available was seven thirty three. And based on the revised anti Indian Academy of Pediatric Growth chart, based on the BMI Z scores, we classified them into underweight, normal weight, overweight, and obese. And underweight were with a sample size of seventy four. Normal weight were five sixty three. Overweight and obese were with a sample size of ninety six. anthropometry and clinical parameters for all individuals height weight waist and hip circumference were done using standardized methods biochemical investigation which includes fasting postprandial glucose c peptide hbnc serum replicates were done using standardized techniques gad antibodies were method using elisa so definitions of type 1 diabetes is it was diagnosed if there was a history of diabetes ketoacidosis or fasting c peptide level of less than 0.3 micromol per ml and stimulated value of 0.6 micromol per ml Or if the insulin treatment was recorded right from the time of diagnosis, whenever possible. So GAD antibodies were also measured at this time. So results. This table presents the clinical characteristics of the subjects based on the BMI Z scores. They were classified into underweight, normal weight, and overweight, as I told earlier. The age at their first visit were 12.2 for underweight and 12.1 for normal weight and 11.1 for overweight individuals. And the age at diagnosis. For overweight individuals, were 10.1. When compared to underweight, it was 11.4 and 11.2, and it was also statistically significant. The BMI was naturally increased in overweight individuals when compared to the underweight and normal weight individuals. So this table presents the biochemical characteristics of the study individuals. This shows that C peptide fasting and as well as stimulated was significantly higher in overweight and in higher overweight individuals when compared to the underweight and no normal weight individuals, and the HbA1c was significantly lower when compared to the underweight individual. That is, it was 10.4 in overweight and 12.8 in glug in no underweight individuals, and it was also statistically significant. The GAD antibodies was seen in each of the groups, and it there was no statistically significant between the groups. All of them had 62 and 65, 65 percent of GAD antibody identification. So this figure presents the C peptide simulated C peptide levels between all the three groups. and this shows that when the proportion of bma increases the preservation of c peptide level is also increased that is from 4.1 it is increasing to 20.4 and 25 and this shows that the c peptide level stimulated is significantly more in overweight and obese individuals when compared to the underweight and normal weight individuals we did a binary logistic regression for odds ratio and we found out that the normal weight at 6.1 odds ratio increased fold of C peptide value when compared to the underweight and overweight and obese individuals, 7.9 fold odds ratio for C peptide level when compared to the underweight individuals. Then we did a multiple logistic regression to see the adjustment factors, and mean after adjustment for age at diagnosis, the odds ratio remained 6.64, and for overweight it was 10.73. And after we adjust for gender and HbA1c, still we got the odds ratio 6.71. And 10.9, and after adjusting for region HbA1c, it was 5.9. Slightly it got reduced, and for overweight obese, it was 8.88.
Then we did a regression analysis to find whether the BMIZ scores has any impacting factors. And we found that the beta value of 0.047, it was reduced, but it was statistically still the significant. And age of diagnosis had no impact on this stimulated CPAP levels. And it, the beta value was reduced only 0.08, but was still it was statistically significant. So let me go into the conclusion of my study. In our study, 13.1% of children were overweight or obese at type 1 diagnosis diabetes. However, the mean stimulated CPP level was statistically higher in overweight individuals than in the normal weight or underweight individuals. So finding from our study suggests that even children with obesity may develop diabetes at an early age and have greater beta cell function at the diabetes onset than the underweight individuals. So children with overweight are diagnosed with diabetes at an early stage with largely preserved C-peptide levels. So underweight have worse beta cell function compared to overweight type 1 diabetes individuals. However, longitudinal studies are needed to see whether the progression of beta cell function at different rate in these three groups with type 1 diabetes individuals. Thank you for allowing me to present the slides.